aches and pains acting up again? Imagine five sets of massaging hands all over your body. Now enjoy Back Pleaser by Hometics with five massaging motors. Command controller relieves neck, shoulder, lower back, buttocks, thighs, or any combination of the five. Press the cycle button for massage waves up and down your body. Adjust the speed and strength. Slow and gentle to relax or intense and fast to energize. Work seated, reclining, or lying down. Complete with custom adapter. Pain in my back? Gone. I love it. I can't relax without it. Now order Back Pleaser for just three easy payments of $29.95. Get Back Pleaser with heat for just one extra payment of $29.95. Order now and we'll include this foot massage pillow, a $30 value free. Back Pleaser by Hometics, the dynamic massage system you'll use anywhere, anytime. To order and receive your free luxury foot massage pillow, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-257-1234 or send check or money order for $89.85 plus $19.95 shipping to the address on your screen. Michigan residents at 6% sales tax. Friday on Dinner and a Movie. Don't miss the TBS premiere of Back to the Future. Whoa, this is heavy. And make traveling through time and onion tart with Paul and Annabelle. <gasps> Dinner and a Movie, 8.05 Eastern Friday, only on TBS. Warpity Band of Daru! She's very special. Willow. Saturday at 8.05 Eastern. Turn to TBS. From CNN Center in Atlanta, this is Headline News. I'm Gordon Graham. You might say last night's vice presidential debate was like a good stew. It was filled with meaty policy statements and spiced with the hint of a presidential tryout for the year 2000. Vice President Al Gore and Republican nominee Jack Kemp rattled off lists of programs and results. Always respectful of one another's motives, they didn't shy from attacking each other's judgment. And they sang their bosses' praises while trying to show they have what it takes to occupy the Oval Office. Both claim to be on the ticket that best represents American families. There really is no separation between a strong community and a strong economy. And you can't have a strong economy without strong communities and strong families. The word economics in Greek came from the word family or law or custom of the family. A family without a job where both breadwinners are away from home, cannot spend time with their children, or can't send the child to the school of their choice, rather than just the choice of the federal bureaucracy, cannot possibly be as strong as a family that has the nurture, the love, uh, the dignity, and the justice that goes along with one breadwinner, uh, a strong job, and if that man or woman wants to work, it's their choice, not just to pay taxes. So we need both. We need strong community, we need strong schools. We need schools that nurture the type of discipline and respect from teachers and parents. And Bob Dole wants to empower the public school districts and the teachers, not the federal bureaucracy at the Department of Education. Well, Senator Dole has said that he wants to abolish the Department of Education. He voted against the creation of Head Start. He vigorously opposed the Family and Medical Leave Act, which was the first law that President Clinton signed as president. Now Senator Dole has suggested that he would repeal the Family and Medical Leave Act if he had the chance if he was elected president. We believe in more educational opportunity and measures to strengthen families, not restrict their access to education. Mr. Kemp, speaking of the family, where do you come down on that? Do you, uh, do you believe it should be repealed, the Family uh, Leave Act? I wouldn't have voted for it. It's in place. Um, their answer of this administration to every single problem is another regulation and another tax. Uh, clearly in America, we need, I, I am astounded to think that you can have a strong Family Leave Act or policy by a business if they're not making a profit, if there aren't a lot of jobs, if there isn't the type of policies that will enhance the formation of the seed corn and the oxygen and the capital that would allow that company not only to retain that profit, but to invest it. Polls conducted immediately after the debate found most people considered Gore the winner and the man more voters would choose as president. 
A CNN USA Today Gallup poll of 408 registered voters who watched the debate found 57% thought Gore did a better job. 28% thought Kemp was better. Before the debate, when asked who would make a better president, 49% said Gore, while 46% chose Kemp. But after the debate, the gap was wider. Then, 53% said Gore would make a better president, while 41% thought Kemp would. In a post-debate phone call with Kemp, Republican presidential nominee Bob Dole told his running mate he scored a touchdown, while Gore didn't score at all. Dole watched the televised debate from a private home in Illinois. He praised Kemp for hammering home the details of their economic plan. Tennessee will welcome home native son Al Gore and his running mate, President Clinton, today. The president took care of some bills in Washington yesterday, including one designed to fight terrorism and improve airline safety. One of the last pieces of legislation passed by the 104th Congress, it al allocates $19 billion for airport improvement, maintenance, and security. Three veterans-related bills also became law. They improve health care and ensure that benefits keep pace with inflation. Next week, the president will debate Bob Dole for the final time. Wolf Blitzer examines Clinton's possible strategy for that face-off. At the White House, the real focus of attention is on the main event, Clinton's rematch next Wednesday in San Diego against Bob Dole. Aides claim Dole, despite his backtracking, hurt himself Tuesday when he referred to the president as Bozo. Yeah, we like the Bob Dole in the debate Sunday night better than the Bob Dole yesterday. For veteran Clinton strategist, the Dole comment brought back memories of 92. My dog Millie knows more about foreign affairs than these two bozos. It's crazy. That kind of talk about Clinton and Gore probably didn't help Bush in that campaign. Still, Clinton's advisors are debating strategy if Dole switches gears and goes negative. Some want the president to hit right back. If, for example, Dole raises the matter of Clinton associates going to jail, the president could come back with the case of David Owen, a longtime Dole fundraiser and friend from Kansas who also served time. But for the most part, Clinton's aides want him to remain presidential and stay positive. That's the way to win an election in the president's viewpoint. And uh, if the opponent chooses to go a different route, uh, the opponent can do so at his own peril. Wolf Blitzer, CNN, the White House. The dam that controls water flow in the Grand Canyon will now give environmental concerns a top priority. Yesterday, Interior Secretary Bruce Babbitt signed a new regulation for the Glen Canyon Dam on the Colorado River. The move follows an apparently successful experiment that flooded the canyon to mimic natural before the dam was built. Babbitt says it showed major dams can be made to protect, not hurt, the environment. A salvage logging operation in a California old-growth forest has been halted. Pacific Lumber began logging on Monday with approval to remove only dead or dying trees from the ancient redwood groves. But on Tuesday, a crew cut down a live 10-inch wide tree. Forestry officials issued a 24-hour stop order. They say it will remain in effect until they're confident Pacific Lumber will stick to the rules. There's something wrong with some frogs in the upper Midwest. Stumps for legs, missing eyes, and even extra limbs are just some of the abnormalities spotted throughout Minnesota and nearby states. Scientists aren't sure what's causing the deformities or whether humans are in danger. The Environmental Protection Agency plans to study it. Federal statistics show deaths from sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, fell 30% between 1992 and 1995. The Department of Health and Human Services says the drop is probably due to parents changing their baby's sleeping position. The cause of SIDS is unknown, but studies show a decrease in SIDS when babies are put to sleep on their sides or backs. A pediatrician's organization recommended in 1992 that babies not sleep on their stomachs. The New York Times theater critic, Newsweek magazine, once called a super critic, has died. Walter Kerr died of congestive heart failure yesterday at the age of 83. Kerr won the Pulitzer Prize in 1978 for the whole body of his critical work. In 1990, Manhattan's restored Ritz Theater was renamed the Walter Kerr Theater. The president of the Times Foundation called Kerr the heart, soul, and brain of what theater criticism should be. 
The FBI will soon begin focusing on the victims of the July crash of TWA Flight 800. Agents will be questioning victims' families. They're checking for personal motives like revenge, insurance fraud, even suicide. In preparation for asking tough questions under delicate circumstances, agents attended a three-hour sensitivity session with family members of victims of two other plane crashes. Rupert Murdoch's new 24-hour cable news channel is on the air, but not in much of New York where it originates. Murdoch blames that on Ted Turner. Gary Tuckman reports. Ted Turner and Rupert Murdoch, two well, men with ample intelligence, vision, and money. They both like a challenge. What they don't like is each other. Ted Turner has something that Rupert Murdoch has always wanted, CNN, a worldwide news channel. Murdoch, despite his power all around the world with satellite distribution, with the Fox network, doesn't have news. And he's tried and failed to get news, and now he's trying it again, and he feels that, that Turner, for personal reasons, is watching it. The Fox News Channel is now on the air. The two vice presidential candidates prepare to square off for their only debate tonight. So why would someone allege Ted Turner is blocking it? Well, the nation's second largest cable company, Time Warner, has decided not to carry the Fox News Channel on its cable systems. That's the same Time Warner that is on the verge of completing a deal to purchase Turner Broadcasting, the parent company of CNN. And since Time Warner is New York City's largest cable company, most New Yorkers can't watch the channel that has just moved into a spanking new Sifu studio in Manhattan. We have 75 channels. Uh, if you can't find one to have a 24-hour worldwide news operation that's headquartered in New York, there's something dramatically wrong. Rupert Murdoch is a strong supporter of New York State's Republican governor, attorney general, and New York City's mayor, who all support Murdoch's battle. So is there a conflict of interest? Oh, conflict of interest. Get out of here. The fact is, I mean, you guys are really unbelievable. The fact is that uh, this is a station located in the city of New York. It has a lot of jobs in the city of New York. But in an editorial headline, Cable Interference, the New York Times wrote that, quote, the conflict in the situation is clear and unseemly. These three have no business using their powers to force Mr. Murdoch on the air. Meanwhile, another New York paper, the New York Post, which always includes CNN in its television listings, took CNN out of those listings for two days earlier this week. The Post happens to be owned by Rupert Murdoch. Under the merger agreement, Time Warner is required to carry a CNN competitor and has chosen MSNBC. But Fox officials have filed suit, claiming antitrust violations. Uh, analysts say Murdoch and Turner dislike each other for many reasons. Murdoch thinks that Turner is a, is a left-wing liberal. Turner thinks that Murdoch is a right-wing conservative. This battle, they say, is just the latest reason. So the Fox News Channel has joined the 24-hour news club. But it pleases nobody in the channel's New York headquarters that the only way most of the hometown viewers can watch is by peeking through the studio window. Gary Tuckman, CNN, New York. New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani has agreed to put Fox's news channel on one of the city's public access cable channels. Racial tension is on the rise in the United States, especially in the South. That's the conclusion of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights after a series of forums about the recent rash of church fires in the South. Members say although not all of the fires were racially motivated, racial tension is a serious problem. The commission is asking the governors of several southern states to meet with it to discuss the issue. The United States' top diplomat, Warren Christopher, has set a record most miles traveled by a Secretary of State in a four-year term. While flying from Mali to Ethiopia, Christopher passed the record held by his predecessor, James Baker. Christopher has flown more than 704,000 miles, topping Baker's mark of 700,131 miles. The Reagan administration's George Shultz holds the all-time record. He logged a total of 900,000 miles during his six years in office. Next in dollars and cents, more Canadian auto workers walk out, escalating an already massive strike. And also ahead, the man they call the political animal. Tolerance. There is too much Temperatures will continue to soar in the west. Once again, highs will reach the 80s and 90s, although the northwest will cool. Look for cool weather in the Great Lakes. This is Headline News, a CNN network. Whether they cook in a crowded metropolis or a one-horse town, people who cook for a living are the pickiest people on earth because they know it takes the best ingredients to make the best meals. 
Maybe that's why they cook with Uncle Ben's converted brand rice. Fluffy, great tasting, and perfect every time. No wonder more restaurants serve Uncle Ben's than any other brand of rice. Meal after meal, good cooks cook with Uncle Ben's. Willow. Saturday at 8.05 Eastern. Turn to TBS. Now for our annual report. Recent mergers have been fruitful. New product development is up and growing. Florida's natural premium brand, Nut from Concentrate Orange Juice, is made by a co-op of growers. They own the land, they own the trees, they own the company. So unlike those big juice companies, we have a different idea about market share. Have some, Bob. Thank you. It's a difference you can taste. Florida's natural premium brand, Orange Juice. <laughs> This year, give someone a birthday cake they can't eat, but they'll still love. The birthday flower cake from 1-800-Flowers. It may look like a cake, but each one is really a floral arrangement made from fresh flowers instead of cake. The birthday flower cake is a perfect way to put happy into a birthday. With 1-800-Flowers, giving someone a truly special birthday gift is a piece of cake. Just call our name, come into our stores, or visit us on the web. Charitable contributions are on the rise in the United States, but fewer Americans are feeling generous. A survey finds households donating money last year gave an average of $1,017, $89 more than in 1993. But the total number of households giving money dropped. 69% made contributions in 1995, down 4% from 93. On Wall Street, blue chips fell on heavy trading. The Dow Jones Industrial Average took its worst beating in more than a month, shedding 36 points to close at 59.30. That's the biggest one-day loss since September 5th. The strike at General Motors Canada has now completely shut down Canadian operations, and that's threatening production at plants in the United States and Mexico. Ed Garston reports. <laughs> An hour before their own deadline, the last of GM's Canadian workers left the assembly lines and headed for the picket lines. Now the walkout is total. There are no Canadian GM plants in production. Striking workers say they must make financial sacrifices now for future job security. GM's making a ton of money and they're, uh, they're screwing us. We don't want our plants to uh, close up. Fresh from fruitless contract talks in Toronto, Auto Workers <laughs> Union President Buzz Hargrove flew down to Windsor to rally his troops. He said without concessions from GM on using fewer outside non-union suppliers, there would be no progress. Just because in a high unemployment economy or a low wage economy, uh, you can get someone to do this work cheaper, you don't have a right to sell our jobs as long as we're meet meeting the commitment of quality productivity. But GM says it must be able to outsource to keep labor costs down and in turn car prices. With all of GM's Canadian plants now shut down, a domino effect will reach across the border, causing more layoffs at U.S. assembly plants and thin supplies at showrooms. Even before Wednesday night's walkouts, more than 1,800 workers at plants in Michigan and New York were laid off temporarily. GM says several hundred more workers could be laid off by the end of the week. Canadian plants provide components for several U.S. plants, including the Hamtramck, Michigan plant that builds Cadillacs. It has only enough components to last about eight days. Two other hot models may soon be in short supply. The Illumina uh, in Monte Carlo, though, uh, particularly the Illumina, is selling extremely well, and it's made in Canada. And customers are buying them while they can. In the last couple of days, our, our business on uh, Illumina sales and Cavalier sales has picked up considerably because people are worried that they're not going to get their ordered units when, when they've been promised because of the strike. Both sides are hoping for a quick resolution, but striking workers are preparing for the worst. 
Everybody was wishing everybody Merry Christmas before we left. Ed Garston, CNN, Windsor, Ontario. Two German businessmen are excited about a bright idea, but the phone company has told them to take a cold shower. The men had hoped to make money by converting old telephone booths into shower stalls. They had already put plumbing in two booths and were selling them for $2,600 apiece. Then the German telephone company put an end to the plan. It's afraid people might get confused and try to make emergency calls from a stall that's actually a shower. Sports is next. This is Headline News, a CNN network. In the frozen Arctic, the harshest place on Earth, summer is brief. As the sun returns, life stirs again. That's when Pete Jess, bush pilot, polar veteran, and a Land's End customer, took our new squall jacket for a tryout spin. We get 30 knot winds up here. It'll freeze you in a hurry. Not with the squall jacket on duty. It has an outer shell of three-ply subflex nylon, not two-ply like some. It stops the wind. It just plain stops it. And now we've discovered a way to give it ten times the water resistance of an ordinary subplex jacket. Yet it's breathable, comfortable, and lined with Polartec 300. The fleece warm as wool, but much lighter. In the Arctic, staying warm is everything. The new Land's End Squall Jacket. PGS recommends it warmly. Land's End Direct Merchants. For a free copy of our catalog, call 1-800-LANDS-END. Lots and lots, tons and tons of tennis balls. Some of the things that are on my Discover card statement... I travel quite a bit. Ooh, I didn't know that the golf balls were on here. Just relax, enjoy nature, and... Uh... Very good. Babidochromus, Coruleus. They don't want to play with me now because I beat them 90% of the time. I'll take out $100 to buy the bait, um, gas up the boat. How many credit cards make a statement like that? See, what else do I have on it this? It pays to discover. Use it where you see the Nova sign. Unlike those big juice companies, we have a different idea about window offices, cutting overhead, even liquid assets. Florida's natural premium brand, not from concentrate juice, is made by a co-op of growers whose only business is making juices. They own the land, the trees, the company. So although our idea of market forecast may be a little different, it's a difference you can taste. Florida's natural premium brand juice. Matt Yaloff with Headline Sports. One of the great things about postseason baseball is that anything can happen, and it usually does. Game one of the ALCS was no exception. The Yankees got a game-tying home run from Derek Jeter in the eighth on this controversial call. A 12-year-old fan reached over the wall and took away what seemed to be a catch from Orioles right fielder Tony Tarasco. Right field up Rich Garcia ruled it a home run. So the game was tied. In the 11th inning, Bernie Williams brought a packed house down for the game-winning homer. But after the game, it was Jeter's home run getting all of the attention. There was no way in the world I would have dropped that ball. That's the only way he would have been able to get on base, was if I would have dropped it. At the time I saw it, the ball, the ball disappeared. I never, I never saw anybody touch the ball. And uh, I thought the ball was out of the ballpark. All I know is that watching my right fielder, he was under the ball and just on his tiptoes to catch it. If it was going to hit the top of the wall, he'd have jumped. Game two is Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. The Braves' dominance in the postseason continued at Fulton County. Atlanta made a winner out of ace John Smoltz. With the game tied at two in the eighth, Javi Lopez cracked a broken bat single driving in two. The Braves take game one, four to two. It's much better, uh, you know, being up one nothing than down one nothing. But you know, by no means this is going to make the season, the series, any easier. It's it's going to be a tough series. Game two, Thursday, 8 p.m. Hockey. The Red Wings obtained Brendan Shanahan from Hartford for Keith Primo and Paul Coffey. Shanahan wasted no time in mixing it up in his first game. Detroit behind Chris Osgood blanked Edmonton two nothing. The Isles and Senators skated to a tie. Montreal knocked off L.A. Osgood with 18 saves. The Ducks blanked Chicago. St. Louis over Calgary. And Buffalo beat Vancouver. Matt Yawa, Headline Sports. This is Headline News, a CNN network. Morning number three. Smoke free. Nice going, Nicoderm CQ. Doing fine with no help, thanks. 
you want to cheat. No. Come on, just one. No. I hate how calm you are. That's the CQ. Only Nicoderm CQ starts you off with the highest level of medicine. A 24-hour stream that's still with you when you wake up. It helps calm the cravings. You'll see. Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to quit successfully. I used to be able to feel the winter in my skin till April or May. For my skin, winter feels like forever. Oil of Olay 2-in-1 Moisturizing Body Wash. But after just one shower, all I could feel all over was moisture. 75% moisturizer, it puts more moisture in skin than any leading beauty bar or shower gel. This could actually be my first winter without dry skin. The 2-in-1 Moisturizing Body Wash from Oil of Olay. Life without body lotion is a definite possibility. Canadian pop singer Alanis Morissette has made U.S. history. An industry trade group reports her debut album is the all-time bestseller for a female vocalist in the United States. Thirteen million copies of her album, Jagged Little Pill, have been sold south of the Canadian border. That beats Whitney Houston's debut, which stands at 12 million copies sold. Morissette's album also topped the debuts of Carol King and Madonna. Republican presidential nominee Bob Dole may have been born in the USA, but Bruce Springsteen apparently wishes he was born to run for another office. Dole played Springsteen's hit Born in the USA at a campaign stop in Red Bank, New Jersey, near the singer's home. Uh, Springsteen released a statement saying the song was used without his permission, and he doesn't support Dole. Uh, with political books like Primary Colors and books by comedians like Jerry Seinfeld making big money, Bob Hope has high hopes for his own writings. He was in New York Wednesday to sign copies of his book, Dear Prez, I Want to Tell You. It's a collection of his memorable and humorous vignettes about the past 11 presidents, many of whom Hope has known personally. Uh, what do you call a guy who follows politics and can't help but laugh? In the New York theater, you call him a political animal. Cynthia Tornquist explains. Hello, and welcome to our election coverage. In with the good air, out with the bad. When you follow politics as closely as Doug McGrath, there's only one way to look at it. Incredulity, rage, fury, shock. The only healthy way to deal with it is to laugh at it. Alistair told me that it was his dream to create a gesture that would sweep the nation. McGrath stars in a one-man show he wrote called Political Animal. The satire follows a fictional presidential candidate who rises from obscurity to national notoriety through ambition and dirty tricks. Have these breath fanatics ever considered that cigarettes actually prolong people's lives? Think about it. If you're smoking a cigarette in your apartment, you can't be killed by a drunk driver. McGrath's career began in 1980 as a writer for Saturday Night Live. We helped initiate the first period when people hate hated the show. That's been extended many times since then, but it was our idea to start that. So people really hated... You'd tell them where you work, and they'd look at you like, you ruined that show. And you'd think, oh, I know. I, I know what you mean. McGrath was later dropped from the show, but he says he learned some important lessons. It makes you focus really quickly on your writing, and also to be very ruthless about your material. We cut things here, throw it out all the time. It came in handy in 1994 when Woody Allen asked McGrath to collaborate on the screenplay for Bullets Over Broadway. I think maybe I'll go and check into a sanitarium and get the help that I need. I still can't believe we wrote a movie together. That helped McGrath get the attention of Miramax Films, which agreed to let him adapt Jane Austen's novel Emma for the big screen. McGrath directed the picture, even though he had almost no experience. You don't really have to know much to direct a movie. Because all the other people, you, you know, you'll notice there's only one person on the set who doesn't have an actual skill of his own, and it's the director. Emma's success has brought McGrath numerous new offers to direct, but for now, he's happy being the performer. Say, let's not have an environmental hissy fit just because Exxon spilled a few hundred thousand gallons of oil across the top of some ocean. It came from the ocean in the first place. Cynthia Tornquist, CNN Entertainment News, New York. We'll have more news in two minutes. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gordon Graham. Headline News. This is...
is Headline News, a CNN network. You want them? We got them. Every Thursday night, movies for guys who like movies. Tonight. Time to separate the men from the boys. A double barreled blast of adrenaline. <laughs> John claude Van Damme. I'm ready. Blood Sport. Jeff Speakman. You just point the way. The perfect weapon. You want them? We got them. Yeah. Movies for guys who like movies. 805 Eastern tonight, only on TBS. Last lunar fireball was seen over 75 years ago. And after I see it tonight, I can die a happy man. Some gums lose flavor fast, leaving you looking for another piece. <gasps> Too bad he wasn't chewing extra sugar-free gum. It's the one with delicious, refreshing flavor that really lasts. Another 75 years. Hey, people are living a lot longer these days. Extra last, extra long. When was the last time the weight of the world felt like nothing more than a feather? When was the last time you had this much fun or ate this much ice cream? And when was the last time you left home for bluer pastures? Holland America Line. It's time. Book now. Seven-day Caribbean cruises start at just $5.98. Family Matters, weekdays at 6.05 Eastern on TBS. I'm getting down on TBS. Please don't stand too close to the television unless you're wearing an asbestos suit. Birthday, dude. <laughs> you're about to enter the disaster area on TBS. <laughs> don't freak out, lovers of chaos and mayhem. The disaster area on TBS. We'll be right back. The virtually unstoppable Ricochet. And now that it's loose, the RC world will never be the same. Total twin body technology lets Ricochet do pulverizing stunts. Now Ricochet's hitting the walls and taking the falls in this cool, compact six-volt size. Vehicles and battery packs each sold separately from XRC. What goes on inside Batman's head? The Batman Forever micro playsets. Face the mysterious Batcave with trapdoor and rapid launch Batmobile attack. Or reveal the explosive workings of the Riddler's heavily armored hideout. But the Batman Forever Micro Plays that needs sold separate. Get out of the TV set. <laughs> what is the square root of a bowl of oatmeal? Uh, two, um, four. Oh, I don't know. I hate oatmeal. How much do the daydreams of a butterfly weigh? Uh, more than your brain, buddy. <laughs> In the disaster area on TBS, some questions don't have answers. Likewise, some answers don't have questions. Oh, you're weird. <laughs> Watch Feed Your Mind. <laughs> what does the mind eat? Saturday mornings at 7.05 Eastern in the disaster area on TBS. TBS. The disaster area on TV. Did I get it right? You cheated. Hey, whoa! whoa. Oh, no! Let's go! Don't be slow! Whoa! You never know. Now you 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 know. Hot potato! The musical game where you gotta toss him, pass him, just get rid of him before he yells. Oh, you're fried! I was really starting to enjoy those commercials back to the disaster area on TBS. Don't lick your television. The disaster area will be right back on TBS. Mmm, cocoa pebbles. Yabba dabba delicious. Let's go. Delicious. Like, give me those caveman craving cocoa pebbles. Sure, boss. Bravo, Flintstone. Why? You've got rocks in your... Of <laughs> Cocoa Pebble cereal, a bedrock and pot of this good breakfast. I want to vote for president. Now you can voice your choice with this free voting phone card. You can call. But I have to vote first. One free voting phone card in Mark boxes of pebble. At five o'clock, the wind's high. The whistle blows. Look out below. The frantic ants, they're going home. We're going home. It's a race to get up and down the ant hill. In the game of frantic ants. Hurry, hurry. The game where you've got to race all your ants over the ant hill without getting sent back by the ant eater. Get them all home first and you win. It's a race to get up and down the ant hill. Honey, I'm home. In the game of frantic ants. Battery's not included. Here's secret message, Doodle Bear. Yeah, I'm the Doodle Bear. I've got a secret we can share. Use my special pen and these glasses you can wear. And when you put them on, look at what you can see. Whenever you write down your secret face with me. Secret message, Doodle Bear. A new bigger Doodle Bear. I love to doodle, doodle, doodle. Then I jump in the washing machine. 
Buckle your safety belt. We're going back to the disaster area on TBS. Don't listen to anything I say. Okay. The disaster area will be right back on TBS. In the beginning came the beasts, but nature lies. They're robots in disguise. Beast Wars. Heroic new Maximals battle the evil reptile and insect forces of the Predacons. Evil Waspinator changes from insect to high tech and puts the sting on Cheetor. But there's more to Cheetor than meets the eye. Under the skin lurks a robot within, with hidden weapons firing. All new Beast Wars. Each sold separately. Taco Bell presents Nacho and Dog. Nacho, is your costume on yet? Okay, I'm ready. Finally. Ta-da! Ooh, what are you supposed to be? I'm a bee burrito! Now, when you buy a Taco Bell kids meal, you can get a Goosebumps toy. Get the Rapping Mummy, the Scoobmobile, or more. But beware, you're in for a scare. You can collect all four Goosebumps toys at Taco Bell. Oh, how cute, a bean burrito. And what are you? Taco Bell! That's that food, dog. Yes. This is a TBS update. No one knows how the disaster area started. I do. Perhaps it's a walking whirlwind or just a burp gone out of control. The disaster area will continue with Scooby-Doo followed by the Jetsons. Stay with TBS for more disaster area updates. Cheerios is part of this complete breakfast, helping every O power every part of you. From the part that loves to jam, to the part that needs to cram. For putting on a show, Cheerios to power you to go. From playing for the bleachers, to playing sci-fi creatures. Breakfast with Cheerios. You can wake up, eat up, power up. <laughs> The gargoyles call upon the powers of nature to become new storm power gargoyles. Flamestorm Goliath, yeah. Rainstorm Hudson, Whoa. and Ice Storm Brooklyn. Whoa. Flamestorm Goliath's fireball takes flight. Rainstorm Hudson sprays a blast with all his might. And mighty Ice Storm Brooklyn gives Xanatos a fright. Got him. When gargoyles come alive, evil can survive. We are gargoyles. New storm power gargoyles, each sold separately. Blocks not included. I'm back. Oh, it's you. Back to the disaster area on TBS. Go Blaze! We all take energy for granted, but power has its price. Think about it. When you turn on your lights or stereo, you're using a...